Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and what an amazing few weeks it has been watching the development of the Starship prototypes come along. A good thing too, because there've really been no Falcon 9 flights since the Amos 17 mission back at the start of August, which frankly seems like forever ago by SpaceX standards. We did have that amazing Starhopper 150 meter flight, which was the last flight for the vessel, and that happened at the end of August. Incredible test flight there. But what has been going on with SpaceX since then, and what is coming up in the last few months of 2019? Now, personally, I've been eagerly awaiting more progress on Crew Dragon. It has been quite some time since SpaceX's Crew Dragon's Demo 1 mission way back in May, and interestingly, it was announced only last week that NASA had won an Emmy for the interactive programming and coverage of the Demo 1 flight, which put the United States one step closer to their goal of launching NASA astronauts from American soil. Now, every time I hear of stories like this being publicized in this way, I'm just super stoked. It really does seem to me that more and more people are starting to take real notice of the rapid pace of innovation going on in the space industry. So this seriously is awesome to see. We did, of course, sadly have that same Crew Dragon explode while running tests a month later in April of 2019. And we've all been eagerly awaiting to hear news on when the next step of this journey is going to take place. It looks like we are getting closer to that now with SpaceX showing some dramatic footage of its Crew Dragon undergoing rigorous tests of its emergency abort system. The idea of all this tech is that if something goes wrong with the rocket carrying the Crew Dragon to orbit, the module can essentially fire up its own thrusters to quickly escape an exploding first stage, followed then by touching down safely with its parachutes. Now, as a final safety test of these abort systems, SpaceX is actually creating a mission that will intentionally abort midway through the flight tests to ensure the vessel will behave as expected in an emergency. Uh, now this needs to be done before NASA astronauts will actually be allowed to fly on the Crew Dragon for a real mission. And as SpaceX say here in a tweet, it's completed over 700 tests of the spacecraft's Super Draco engines. Fired together at full throttle, Crew Dragon's eight Super Dracos can move the spacecraft half a mile in seven and a half seconds, reaching a peak velocity of 436 miles per hour or just over 700 kilometers per hour. Now that is crazy acceleration. SpaceX only recently tested the first stage of the Falcon 9 booster that will actually launch the two NASA astronauts into orbit with the first crewed test flight. Um, now, when that test flight will take place is still a little uncertain, as we don't even really have solid dates yet on the abort test mission, which needs to come beforehand. It's, uh, it's currently scheduled in within the first half of November, so hopefully we are going to see some more solid dates on this soon. Now, if everything goes well with the upcoming abort test, perhaps we may see the crew mission by the end of 2019. But speaking of abort systems, there has been a lot more debate going on lately about Starship's abort system, or perhaps the lack of abort system at this point. Now, although I did love the space shuttle, Let's face it, it didn't have the best safety record. If humans are going to be flying in Starship, it needs to be a lot safer than the shuttle. Luckily, the main crew area isn't strapped right to the side of a potentially exploding booster like the space shuttle, so that is a good thing. The debate with Starship, however, is how likely it could pull its way off the booster in an emergency situation while being fully fueled during a launch or perhaps even while still on the launch pad. Now, in order to have Starship abort by firing up all engines, including the vacuum engines with massive engine bells attached, the vessel would need to spin up its turbo pumps within essentially fractions of a second and fire all engines at full thrust. Now, a number of people here were quite skeptical that this could be possible with the massive Raptor engines, but Elon's response here explained that the Raptor turbines can spin up extremely fast. We take it easy on the test stand, but that is not indicative of capability. Now, let's assume that the super heavy booster underneath the Starship ruptures. 
Now, it's been a while since I've seen up-to-date stats on the latest fuel capacities for the Super Heavy Booster, but going off some old numbers, we have around 760 tonnes of liquid methane igniting together with over 2,700 tonnes of liquid oxygen. Now, that is a heck of a lot of fuel. Interestingly, though, Elon mentioned here that the pressure wave or explosion with liquid rockets is low as the oxygen and fuel are poorly mixed. If you can fly out of it, you're probably doing okay. So it seems to suggest that an exploding super heavy could potentially still allow the Starship to fire up all of those engines and fly out of the massive fireball that is rapidly expanding in all directions. Now, that sounds very crazy to me, but I'd love to see a simulation of such a thing to see how this would really pan out. If you've seen any hard numbers or associated information on this, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Now, speaking of Starship development, there has been a massive amount going on at both the Texas site and the Florida site. Now, the race is really on now to see how fast these two prototypes can be assembled. Elon still seems to have the 28th of September as a target for the Starship presentation, so that's great. This is going to answer a load of questions that the community has been sitting on for quite some time. Also, just a quick mention here of this very sweet mock-up from Alex showing what the Boca Chica Starship could look like with all of the sections in place and uh, the wings and fins included. Very nice, Alex. And indeed, how will the real vessel look? You know, that's something we've all been very curious about. There have been so many changes over the last 12 months with Starship. Just remember, it was only September of 2018 that Elon presented a version of Starship that wasn't using the new stainless steel ideas. Now, since then, of course, we've had the development of the Starhopper vehicle. It has already flown several times, and it's already been retired now to become a test stand. Now, none of this had even been thought up back when this was being presented in 2018. And also, it seems that the presentation is going to quite specifically focus on the Starship itself, rather than infrastructure needed for Mars colonization. You know, sometimes you just have to take a step back from everything going on at SpaceX and then just remember how fast everything here is moving. The iterations of Starship over the years seems to have jumped around quite a lot. I do hear a fair amount of criticism from the community, but honestly, I think this is largely because we are all witnessing it so directly in such a short period of time. SpaceX really does love to have the community informed about all these iterations and from a publicity point of view, it certainly does seem to be working for them. Comparatively, very little talk about what Blue Origin may be up to, as it's all very much being developed behind closed doors. There's really nothing much to report on or discuss. Now, don't get me wrong here, I do hope to see Blue Origin pushing humanity forward and helping us all to take huge strides in the space industry, but we're not going to know much until we actually start to see some real test flights of an orbital class booster. Now, recently we were starting to see SpaceX taking the steps necessary to start flying the Starship prototype in development. Documents filed with the FCC were seeking the permissions required to communicate with the prototype while it's in flight. Now, the last I read, the maximum altitude for this filing was for 74,000 feet or around 22 kilometers in altitude. These test flights are going to be amazing. True that it is far from low Earth orbit, but compared to the 150 meter flight from the Starhopper, this is really taking it up to the next level. I've got to say though, I'm a little unsure that the Starship prototypes will be fully assembled prior to Elon's presentation on the 28th. The Boca Chica team in Texas still seems to be struggling quite a lot to get that nose section finalized. We just recently saw some shots here of a brand new section being constructed, presumably to replace the old one. Probably a good move as the old structure was certainly looking a little worse for wear. The nose section has been off for quite a while now, so hopefully they're going to have all that back together successfully very soon. 
Now there is quite a lot of crane activity going on right now, so perhaps we'll see all of this come back together over the next few days. Now over the last 24 hours or so, we've seen these quite interesting looking leg attachment parts. I believe they're leg attachment parts anyway. Um, this is all very exciting seeing these come together. I really wanna see how they're going to be mounted to the body of the Starship. Really cool stuff there. Now there is plenty going on as well at the Florida site. This wonderful photo here by Greg Scott taken. You can just see how close these two vessels are in terms of their progress. This wonderful footage here is showing just a heap of ring segments already being constructed. There's eight there on the left, uh, 12 on the right as far as I can see, and possibly a few more under construction. So, you know, around 20 more ring segments. That is going to be an extremely great start to the next vessel they're going to be building, which is either going to be, I'm assuming, a super heavy booster or another starship. More exciting news going on around SpaceX's massive Starlink network. Gwen Shotwell, SpaceX's CEO, announced that SpaceX is hoping to launch 24 Starlink missions in 2020 as they continue to build out this massive broadband constellation. Remember that this constellation is planned to have around 12,000 satellites screaming around low Earth orbit. We've never seen a plan quite like this before. The Starlink network aims to provide super low latency broadband internet all around the world, and this will provide fast and reliable internet to populations with little or no connectivity, including those in rural communities and places where existing services are really too expensive or unreliable. Now, this is an ambitious and frankly amazing project and next year we could be seeing an average of two launches for Starlink occurring every month. Now that is all going to depend a little on customer missions as the company of course does have limits of how many missions can be flown in a year but this is certainly going to be a record for the number of SpaceX launches in a 12 month period. Gwen also mentioned that SpaceX plans to do seven to eight more missions this year, including Starlink. Now that is down a little from the numbers of missions previously planned for 2019, but this time around it seems that the delays have been mostly on the customer's side with missions that simply were not ready in time. That seems to be the lull that we are seeing in the launch schedule right now. And given that it has been well over a month now since the last Falcon 9 flight, I can't wait to see the acceleration of the launch schedule going on next year. That is going to be incredible. So loads and loads going on there. I'll be following closely on everything here as it evolves. So if you want to stay informed, hit that subscribe button. It does really help me to keep creating content that you'll love. Thank you, of course, everyone for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please consider clicking that thumbs up button. If you have any comments or questions, please drop them down in the comments below. Thanks very much to all my support crew listed here. If you're interested in these topics and you'd like to help out, follow my Discord link in the description and join us all in there. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my video from the other week where we talked a little more in depth about the real radiation risks that SpaceX and NASA will face with trips through the Van Allen belt and onwards to the moon and Mars. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.